Yo, what's going on, FG fam? It is episode number 31 of our Miami Marlins franchise on MLB The Show 21. I appreciate all of the support thus far. Keep that up. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel for the love of franchise content, which is exactly what we do here. But in today's episode... It is the trade deadline. You want to see the big moves that were made? You want to see them on the field? Then don't go anywhere. Time to start this episode right with some trades, and look at this, baby. Lucas Giolito offered to us for Seth Lugo, Casey Golden, and our current closer, Craig Kimbrell. I'm willing to do that deal. We're bringing in another ace pitcher into the squad. Now, Jorge Alfaro has been playing pretty well for us this season, but it is a contract year for him and we are likely not going to pay what it's going to take to bring back our starting catcher. Bobby Robinson, I really do love what he does in the minor leagues. He's a 70 overall right now, but he is a C potential, and I don't know that he'll ever grow into our full-time starting third baseman. And we can upgrade the catcher spot with Sean Murphy, who can... Hit every bit as good as Alfaro, pretty much, and we can have him under control for another couple of seasons. Might not be our full catcher the entire rest of the series, but at least for now he is. Sixto Sanchez is somebody the Yankees want, and they're willing to give up Glaber Torres. They're also willing to give up Gio Urshela and other things, but I would take Glaber Torres to be our full-time starting second baseman. Now, the thing about him is he is in a contract year, so we'll likely not be able to hold on to him past this season, but at least for now, we'll have a starting second baseman here in Glaber Torres and one who could be incredibly good this season and potentially put us over the top in this playoff race. So our lineup's looking fantastic. Our starting rotation is now greatly improved with Giolito in there behind Syndergaard, Lopez, Alcantara, and Meyer. Look at that, four hot starters out of our five. And then in the bullpen, Ryan Muller now called up to become the closer. I think he's ready. He was our first first round draft pick of the series. And I'm really excited to see how he can do in that closing role. So of course we're gonna take a look at Lucas Giolito's first start for our Miami Marlins here against the New York Mets. He gets to start at home here at South Beach Park. So we'll see what Giolito can do. We have greatly improved this team in the basically two and a half seasons that we have taken the reins. We're a game and a half up on the New York Mets, and we are looking to extend that here to two and a half if Giolito can have a good start, and he's had a great season. 293 ERA, 119 whip, he's 10 and three, and we are gonna look to extend that record out to 11 and three if we can. Giolito in the top of the first, striking out Dominic Smith. In fact, he struck out the side in the first inning. So it will be Jose Barrios opposing him. He's had 20 starts this year. He has been incredible for the Mets. We've played him already this season. And here's Javi Baez getting us off to a hot start, leading off in the bottom of the first with a bomb. His 26th home run of the season, 451 feet, an absolute blast to straightaway center. Jeff McNeil's a little angry about it. They were hoping they could come in and ruin our day today, but Javi Baez getting us off to a good start. And look who else is getting off to a good start. As a Marlin, it is Glaber Torres lacing one into left field into the water fountain. His 24th home run of the season, first as a Marlin. It is great to see Glaber Torres coming in and providing an impact already as our now full-time second baseman. So now John Birdie will come in for pinch hit situations. And, you know, when we need a backup, 
to play a game or two as Michael Conforto puts one in that very same left field fountain. 16th homer of the year. It's been a little slow for Conforto this season, but there we go. We're off to a 4-0 start. Here's a strikeout of Pete Alonzo. That one's got to get picked up and thrown on to first to confirm the first out of the second. Here's Giolito up against Guriel Jr. He will strike out on the slider away. Giolito with his fifth strikeout. He struck out his first five batters. Here's Austin Hayes. Never mind. Make it his first six outs. All strikeouts. James McCann up in the top of the third. He will strike out as well. His first seven uh, outs are all strikeouts. There we go against Guriel Jr. in the top of the fifth. Here's Austin Hayes as well in the top of the fifth. 11 strikeouts to this point for Giolito. Eloy Jimenez comes up in the bottom half of that fifth inning, and this one to straightaway center field to the water slide. Gone. Like a girl in a country song, 389 feet for Eloy. His 21st of the year. He's having a very good year and a better year than last season, so we'll see. This lineup is absolutely scary. I think we have put together a team that can definitely compete with the Dodgers if that's who we have to face in the NLCS, if we can get it that far. Adam Eaton goes down swinging as well. 12 strikeouts for Giolito. Top of the six, make it 13 as Jeff McNeil can't catch up with the high heat. Brian Hayes, one of the newer Mets, will strike out as well on the slider away. And Giolito strikes out the side in the sixth. Here's Cabrian Hayes in the top of the ninth. It's Garrett Crochet now in this ballgame. And he'll get the slider inside to fool him for the first out of the ninth. Crochet trying to shut this door down. Not a save opportunity, but there it is. Dom Smith will now strike out as well on the inside, high and in heat. And the Marlins get a 5-0 shutout win in Giolito's first start for them. He is going to get the win. Look at this, though. Come on, MLB The Show. Fix your game. Don't be like Madden and have all these weird glitches. Zero stats on the Giolito dub. So, unfortunately, we can't actually see anything. Look at that. Zero innings pitch, zero earned runs, zero strikeouts. We know that that's false. And a 325 ERA. How does his ERA balloon? It's just completely false. I don't understand. All terrible things we don't want to see. J.J. Blade hit a the only home run, apparently. I, I don't understand. I, I don't know. I don't know how this happens. Completely false numbers. Please, MLB The Show, fix the game. That That is terrible. We can't have that being a thing. So against the Mets, we lose the last game, ending up splitting with them. Here's Ryan Muller with a chance to close one out here against the Cincinnati Reds and take the series two games to one. We're up six to five here in the bottom of the ninth. It is a fly ball out to center with the runner here on second. They're not going to attempt the tag up opportunity. So with two it away in the bottom of the ninth, Tyler Stevenson on deck, but we're not going to get that far. Ground ball over to Glaber. He gets it over to first base, and there we go. Closing out the win, 6-5. to five. Ryan Muller getting the save in the situation for Noah Syndergaard. Javi Baez happy about it, and there we go. Ryan Muller gets player of the game as well. Syndergaard gets the win, six innings pitch, five earned runs. Muller's second save now of his MLB career. Glaber Torres drove in two runs in the game as well. Moving forward, Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp on the road here against the St. Paul Saints. Not a team we get to see very much as far as these little look-ins, so we're going to take a look here. We got a Jazz Chisholm player lock for you against Manuel Vizcaino. He's had 20 starts already this season. He's 5-11 with a 477 ERA, so we're hoping Chisholm can get some stuff done here. He's batting 283 on the season here in the top of the second. He's going to get a base hit. That is a single for Jazz. Chisholm puts himself on base with just one away. So good piece of hitting there for Chisholm, who is looking to maybe one day be the starting shortstop here. 
when Baez is gone. But here's a throw on to first, and that will end the top half of the second. So Chisholm gets on base, cannot get brought home. And the St. Saint Paul Saints now with a 1-0 lead in the top of the fourth inning. Here's Chisholm up at the plate, gets a little bit too far under this one. This one going out to left field and is taken care of for the out. Chisholm in the top of the sixth up at the plate. This one is fading out to the left field line. It is actually in for a double for Chisholm. So there you go. He gets a one-out double. And now Monte Harrison behind him. 0 for 1 on the day. But this one is going to get through. And Chisholm trying his hand at getting to the plate. And he will slide head first to tie the ball game at 1. So Chisholm with the tying run. This one is hit up the middle. Chisholm will take that one from the second baseman. Throw on to first for the double play to end the sixth inning. So a nice defensive play there for Chisholm. But unfortunately, it all is for naught as the St. Saint Paul Saints do take a 2-1 victory here in their home field. Aaron Whitefield, player of the game. He was one for two with a RBI double. Hector Luyan pitched one inning of shutout baseball and Cody Poteet ends up with a loss two innings of one run ball looking at the stats on the season I know pretty short episode here to make up for the long all-star game episode I like to keep them around 15 to 20 minutes here's Javi Baez leading the way again we got Trout Conforto Eloy Jimenez Brian Anderson all playing well this year we're hoping to see Glaber Torres doing that as well. He is so far so good, no complaints. I want to know what you guys think of the trades. I want to know if you think that that makes us potentially the favorites in the National League. I know the Dodgers are still really good. Would you love to see an NLCS, Marlins and Dodgers? I mean, I think that that would be a very premier matchup. The Dodgers have been playing well all season. They added Alec Bohm before the trade deadline. We added Glaber Torres and Lucas Giolito, hoping that that makes us quite a team. I think the trade at catcher is maybe a slight upgrade over Alfaro, but not a big one. That was more for the future to make sure we still had a good catcher in the next couple of seasons. We're only a half a game up on the Mets right now, so do you predict that we are able to hold on to this division and end up winning it and taking it all the way into the postseason? The Dodgers now at 72 wins that's pretty incredible Mets 66 Giants 63 they're four games up on the Padres no shot there so we'll see if the Padres can make a run there White Sox still leading in the central with 64 wins in fact they are still the best team in the American League despite giving away Giolito don't know why that was an offer but it was half a game lead on the Oakland A's, who are also trying to get into the postseason. Jumbo Shrimp, eight games back. It's just never getting any better for them. They win one, they lose one. And the Blue Wahoos are four games back at 7 and 11 of the Biscuits. So Giolito going to go up against the Mets, this time on the road when we start the next episode. Don't know if we will actually get into that game or not. But we will see. Would you like to see his second start as well? You let me know that in the comments section below as well. I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel for the love of franchise and dynasty content, which is exactly what we do right here on the channel. So continue supporting the way you guys have been. I absolutely love all you guys. If you want to connect with me outside of just YouTube, Discord link, and Twitch link, in the description below make sure you come over and say hello in both places and if you want to see more franchise make sure you guys click right here to see some more franchise I feel you,